Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined once again for the Bella's Digest by the man himself, Lou De Bella. Lou, how has your week been? Draining and but productive and no disaster. So I'm not going to complain there. Good stuff. I actually, I actually got extremely, extremely aggravated watching a fight last night on um, Showbox, their 20th anniversary show. Didn't involve one of my guys, mm. but I saw this kid, Shenard Bunch, fight this other kid, Boca Chica. And um, I mean, I watched the fight and it, and, and it was so clear. It was a eight to two, nine to one, seven to three at best kind of win. And they, and they call it a draw. And then, well, a draw is not so terrible. You don't lose. Or whatever. I mean, if a guy wins eight or nine rounds, he has to win the fight. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm not going to, we should change topics because I don't need to keep on this one, but it's like, we just saw this and you just see too much of this. You know? No, I completely agree. Um, and it needs looking at, particularly in the UK at the moment, actually, we've got a real problem. And I had a kid win last night named Isaiah Steen, who's the uh, uh, brother of uh, Charles Conwell. Steen's a 68 pounder, had a great win last night against a really, really good opponent on Showbox. And I was very happy with his performance. So I think he's ready to make a statement as a prospect. So it was, a, it was an okay, I'm not going to complain about the week now. Well, congratulations on that. And we'll, we'll keep his name uh, in our mouths going forward. What did talk to you this week about the two uh, main welterweights in the world right now? Obviously, Errol Spence and Terence Crawford. We've talked about them potentially fighting each other for a long time. But we know Spence is fighting Manny Pacquiao in around, what, five weeks from now? Uh, maybe less, actually. No, less than four weeks mm -hmm. now. It's the 21st, mm -hmm. isn't it? Just after my birthday, actually. So nice birthday present for me. Um, Terence Crawford this week was nominated as the WBO champion to defend against Sean Porter, who is now in the number one position with them. So I guess the first question, really, if that fight does come together, is that the best opponent of Crawford's career? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I, I will tell you, admittedly, you know, I got the opportunity when I was working with PBC to work a lot with with uh, Sean and his dad. And he's a fine guy. But he's a terrific fighter, man, and he's a dog. And I, I've been at so many of his fights, and I love Sean Porter. And I think that Crawford's resume elevates immensely if he can beat Sean Porter. And I don't think it's like a, like I, I'm not a guy that's ever counting Sean Porter out of a fight, particularly where his opponent's also been very inactive, you know. But uh, I, I like that fight. I've always liked that fight. And, and, you know, if that fight happens, good for both of those guys. And honestly, good for both. If you get Spence Pacquiao and you get, you know, you get Porter and Crawford, that's pretty good. Now, if uh, Crawford beats Porter clearly, and he'd be the first person to do that, to, you know, beat him beyond doubt, where does that change or does it change Crawford's position either in the welterweight rankings, the pound for pound rankings or both? I mean, he's already been given credit as if he's already had this win. Yeah, that's true. So my point is, do I think it moves him? No. I think it leaves him in the top three, kind of four kind of position where everyone probably thinks he rightfully belongs, certainly in the top, you know, one hand, certainly, 100%, right? So, I mean, does he move up one vis-a-vis -vis someone else? Or, yeah, but, I mean, does he become, does he usurp Canelo or get into, you know, I don't know. I mean, no, he's supposed to, if he's what everyone says he is, then he should be Sean. And maybe, and maybe he's not, and maybe it's the right time for Sean. Sean's a world-class guy who's never in a bad fight. I mean, and, he, and that, that aggressive come forward style. I mean, he's a great kid. He's got great character. He's a never quit. There's nothing negative. Like there's no quit in that kid. Um, I, man, I, I like that fight and I respect the BO for making a, 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 you know what, there's nothing wrong with understanding that if you can cause a excellent big fight to happen, that you're probably doing the right thing. And I think that, you know, it's a righteous, as I said, in an interview I did with somebody, it's a righteous mandatory. Who's got the tougher challenge if this fight comes off Crawford against Porter or Spence against Pacquiao? I think they both have real challenges. I think, I mean, come on, Manny's Superman. Manny's like, Manny starts moving on the all time pound for pound thing dramatically. I mean, not that he's already not a pound for pound guy, but he moves up dramatically if Manny is able to beat at this stage in his career, 
Errol Spence, who I personally at the moment think is the finest welterweight until proven otherwise. So if Pacquiao, I mean, I'd say Pacquiao has a very daunting task, but he is one of the greatest of all time, but he's also, what's he, 39, 40? I mean, he's around that neighborhood. Maybe older, actually. Yeah. So, I mean, I I think that probably Crawford's going to be a bigger favorite. I don't even know. I mean, yeah, I would say Crawford might be a little bit. I don't know. I, I think they're both fights with risk. I I am interested in both fights, even though I obviously Spence is a favorite and obviously um, uh, Crawford's a favorite. I think Spence has got a lot more physical advantages in the fight than Crawford has against Porter. You know, Crawford's come up from a lighter weight. Porter's a very robust, strong 47-pounder. Pacquiao's yeah, I mean, I... I I think Manny has the more daunting task. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's a tough one, isn't it? How, how do you see Pacquiao making inroads in that fight? What must he do to have his best chance against Spence? Crack him with something, a good, really good combination or a really good shot that gets Spence thinking. Like, bring Spence to a place at some point where Spence feels insecure in the fight. I mean, if Spence dictates the fight, from the first second, it could be a really ugly, ugly time for Pacquiao and a stoppage probably, you know, later in the fight, mid fight. But if, if he, I mean, he needs to get Spence's respect. He needs the respect of the younger, longer, more athletic at this point guy, you know? And similarly for Porter, is it just kind of normal service really, you know, get around him, get inside, harangue him, use your physicality, all that kind of thing. Porter's got to be the best Porter can be at what he does. Mm. And then he's got to hope that that, that is good. You know, that, that can compete and possibly beat Crawford because it's not easy to deal with his kind of mentality in the ring and his output and his pressure. And he's also a smart kid with a good corner. So like, I mean, it's not, I mean, both of them are fair fights. And if you're going to get two fair fights at the top of a division, as a boxing fan or as another promoter or someone that cares about the sport, don't complain. And if both come through their respective contests, do you think that brings a showdown between the two of them closer together or or even further apart? It makes it bigger. It makes the dollars bigger. The dollars are what determines if something happens. If it makes dollars, it makes sense. So I believe if the, if, if the, the favorites in those two fights look spectacular, you know, doing what they, they do in those two fights, then I think the fight becomes much bigger. So again, it's, uh, I'm cool with it if it really becomes, particularly if it really becomes a semifinal kind of thing. And just before we round off for today, it's looking ever more likely that Canelo against Caleb Plant will happen on PBC, on uh, Showtime or Fox or whatever, but not um, as previously thought on the zone. What, what do you make of that development? I mean, it's, 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 again, it's economic analysis. If you think, I mean, if, if PBC and, and whoever the partner is that Heyman has, uh, you know, with PBC um, thinks the economics make sense to guarantee Canelo an ungodly amount of money that may not make sense for subscription TV. Like if they, if, if they're paying at a level that's, you know, very aggressive and, and they make, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't, it's just dollars and cents. I, I think that, um, Canelo's a star, and I think Canelo's going to do the top end of pay-per-view the same way Can- Canelo in the world of streaming is going to have the highest effect in terms of subscribership. Because right now, he is the biggest star in international boxing. Does it kind of reaffirm, once again, what a shrewd move it was by Canelo and his team to become a free agent rather than sign another long-term deal with a promoter? Um, I think it was less of an... Uh, honestly, if you want to know the truth, I think it was less of an I I think it was more taking control of your own career. I don't think there's any reason like not to have you know be working with a promoter. Like I don't think not having the promoter was the thing. Not having an exclusive with a platform was the yeah. thing. That was the whole thing. Not being attached to a platform, being able to be independent. And I think he has a great relationship with the zone and 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 uh, Eddie Hearn. And I think that you'll see them do a lot of business together. But I also think if there's a real opportunity that means quote unquote, crossing the street, he's free to do that. It's really being a uh, platform free agent more than being a promotional free agent. I think at the moment, he's, it's pretty clear to me, he prefers to work with Eddie. 
right? I mean, but I mean, I'm giving Eddie the benefit of the doubt, but <laughs> I really mean that, you know, I think it's clear they have a good relationship, but he, he's free to do what he needs to do at another platform. But um, so I don't think it's the promoter thing so much as, as television platform for agency, but that goes to what I've been saying for years talking to you, that, that in the days where everybody was free to do a deal wherever, and there was an exclusivity with one promotional company and in platform and another promotional company and another one, the big fights were easier to make. Do you think we'll see more of it going forward because of the success Canelo has had down that route? Um, I mean, you're certainly going to see it when someone becomes a megastar like Canelo. Mm. The question is, are you going to see people realizing that the ability to move from platform to platform um, in the absence of one entity that totally is the man, like, look, I mean, you don't want to sit there and advocate for something that's like destroys competitiveness, but if there was a UFC, but there's not going to be a UFC in boxing. It's not a possibility. And boxing has its own world. And in some ways that world is a lot better for fighters in certain ways than the other world is. And, and, um, uh, you know, boxing's it's going to continue to be about, how do you generate the most revenue? And that's that's how the sport, you know, the money sort of determines um, what happens and where it happens. But but and I think it's more important that we, we went back to a time where promoters were talking among promoters and they were selling fights to networks that were distinct from the promoter. But I don't think that's changing anytime soon. But that would be, honestly, that would make the sport a better place. But there's no reason to think that's changing anytime soon. Fair enough. Lou, really appreciate it. As always, incredibly insightful. Um, and we'll catch up again next week. All right. Be well.